Um, good evening and happy new year to everybody. Uh, welcome to this evening's wonderful program with Han Feng and Nancy Berliner. My name is Dinda Elliott and I'm director of programs at China Institute. As you know, throughout the year, we produce, produce a host of programs about arts and culture, business and technology with the hope of deepening the public's understanding of China. These days, we Americans tend to have a fairly one-dimensional perspective on China, which is colored by increasingly contentious politics. And so it is so wonderful to bring a human dimension to our perspective tonight. And what better way to kick off the Year of the Tiger than with a program that is both intellectually enriching and also pure fun. Han Feng is certainly that. You can just feel her exuberance through all of her playful and elegant designs. She's known around the world for her exploration of highly refined textures, materials, and craftsmanship, often using Chinese motifs. And tonight, we're going to hear about how Han Feng began, how she blends East and Western influences, and what she thinks about artistic exchange today. Nancy Berliner, who's going to be talking with Han Feng this evening, is no less accomplished. She is Wu Tong, Senior Curator of Chinese Art at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. And she was the curator of the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Mass, where she conceived and completed an absolutely amazing project, transporting a Hui-style Qing Dynasty, or was it Ming, Nancy? Qing, 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 okay, Qing, Qing Dynasty Qing. house from Anhui Province to the museum. And among her many other achievements, Nancy also curated the 2010 ex exhibition, Emperor's Private Paradise, Treasures from the Forbidden City. So we are so excited to have both of you with us. I'm now going to um, disappear and I'm gonna hand the baton over to Nancy and to Han Feng. So oh, one, one final thing is we will take questions at the end. So um, please type them into, you'll see the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Please type your questions in as they chat. And um, we'll, you know, towards the end of the program, we hopefully will we'll get to all of your questions. So thanks so much. Over to you, Nancy. Thank, thank you, Dinda. So um, it's just wonderful to be here with you, with China Institute and with Han Feng. Um, and indeed, we're going to have lots of fun. Now, a lot of you think of Han Feng as an internationally celebrated fashion designer, but she is so much more than that. You know, I think of Han Feng as like a magician, constantly like pulling bunnies, dogs, cats, everything, food out, out of a hat. And um, I think she's going to pull pull out some surprises for us tonight. I'm just in my background, you can see here a surprise she pulled out the other night when I was at her house. She just suddenly tossed together this amazing meal um, for the second night of Chinese New Year. So um, Han Feng is a fashion designer. She's a chef. She is a promoter and advocate of Chinese contemporary art. And she's just going to um, share with us all sorts of um, parts of herself tonight. So I hope you enjoy. And let's start. I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, and we can start off. Um, Han Feng, everybody's got a family. Um, and we are all products of our family background, our genes, and, and the people who were with us when we were very, very young. So I'm wondering if you can tell us just a little bit about your family, um, your background, and maybe even some of the people that, that were around you and um, nourished your creative spirit when you were a child. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, China Institute, and uh, giving me this opportunity to tell everybody my family is here. So I love, love this photo because in the middle is my mother, and behind her is my grandmother. Then right and left is all her sisters. So very interesting is my only my mother wear Western clothes. Everybody wear. Chinese outfit. So my mother 
from young age, very interested in Western culture for somehow, and uh, also in Christian religions. So yeah, then this is a, um, my childhood picture I like a lot because I'm always a little chubby from child that look like a zongzi, right? Or sausage, <laughs> if you can see that. And so I just to show you guys a little bit how, where I'm coming from. Then this is the only photo of uh, my parents and, the, and the me. My father uh, ended up a suicide when I was very young. So this is the only photo with three of us together. Then this was my grandmother, my father's mother. And uh, in the 1995, I went back to China and the, I give her my clothes. So she wear my design and the, my hat. I photographed this, so I like very much. So, so, and then, so you yeah. grew up and then off you went to art school. What, whatever inspired you to, to go to art school? Well, that time uh, I thought, um, I, I know I went to, if I go to any other school, I'm probably not so great. I only can become probably future, become teacher or something. And so that's, I, my mother always thinking I'm so creative. So I, I just went to study the like a six, uh, uh, eight months of art that got into this art school at uh, China Academy Fine Art. Also old name. Which is one of the top schools in China and, and incredibly difficult to get into. So um, yeah, I was very lucky. <laughs> very lucky. So and this is the, my classmate. I like this picture a lot. You know, we all, you know, with the teacher, we only whole entire class, 12 people with a teacher, 13 people, we travel around the China painting, love that experience. And then suddenly you're in America and, and you're on the cover of Elle magazine. Can, can you tell us a little bit about how you got from just arriving in the United States to creating your whole fashion? So I, this is the only part of this story, a little bit long, but I want to tell you guys about it. When I came in here in 1985, so I learned English. And then that time I also thought I have to have a job. So that's why I um, went to Macy's. I couldn't get the job. I told them the truth, never working my life before. So I went to Bloomingdale the same day. Then that time I lied everything. I said, oh, my mother have a shop in China and uh, I had experience to sell and uh, end up I got the opportunity. So I went to a dry cleaning store. I tell the dry cleaner, please, if they call you, you, you tell them I'm a good salesperson. So the only person I know, so Jeanette cleaning. Now I said, don't say clean, just say Jeanette. So in the end, she called me. She said, oh my God, they called me. I told them how great you are. So I become great salesperson in Bloomingdale. After a year that I met some fabric company owner, they thought I'm super funny and they invite me and they asked me to work for them. So I started from cleaning the showroom, cutting swatches, and up, I took some and they get rid of uh, the small swatches, uh, leftover fabric, I made a scarf. So when they went to the shop, they think I look like a fashion designer. So I said, yes, I am. So I become one. So a month later, I just cut all this uh, leftover material and uh, took it to Hunter College, ask Chinese students, hey, can everybody help me make it? So I, a month later, I took the scarf to the shop. I made $5,000. I was so happy I become a designer. So I, I quit a job. Of course. Uh, 
This is a scarf. Whoops. No, it's not this is a scarf, that's a scarf later. But uh, I started from a scarf to accessories to end up uh, in Henry Bendel. They asked me to design a shirt. I designed the two, then they gave me a bigger order. So just uh, by luck, I delivered. And from then on, I met a PR company asked me to, to do a fashion show to make me richer and famous. <laughs> and uh, I want to be rich. It was so funny. Anyway, so I started ready to wear, I think it was the first Chinese designer in Bryant Park, 1994. So those pictures you see is I from uh, um, 2005, I went back to China and uh, photo shoot all those pictures. So 1995, I went back to China. I took a lot of my clothes because I had a fashion show in Beijing. Saga Fur invited me from Europe, the company. And at that time, I took a lot of clothes to China. So this is my mother with her best friend. They all wear my scarf and my design. This is my stepfather wears my scarf. Yeah, this is just a peasant I saw in Hangzhou on the bridge. I said, do you mind I take a picture of you with my scarf? He said, sure, why not? <laughs> I love this picture. Yes, yeah, beautiful. It's a great picture. Then this one also so fun is a, a father with the two kids visit Hangzhou. I also ask him, do you mind? He's a very happy to wear it let us take a picture i wonder where that baby is now <laughs> i don't know it's a this is like a 1995 94 this is a beijing they all wear my you know she wear the coat and the scarf and he also wears the scarf too and these were just people you picked up off the street yes yes <laughs> <laughs> So I, from 2005, I closed the business in New York. I moved to Shanghai and I, and I just doing made by measure. So all made by hand. So that's uh, is in Shanghai is in the, my showroom. It's really exquisite. The, the workmanship is unbelievable uh, and it's just great. Okay, so here we are back in New York. Yeah, because that time I, uh, from 2010, 2011, I traveled back forth. And uh, so I just feel in New York, have a great relationship there. So Noya Gallery asked me to design a couple outfit to inspire by Klimt. So I just to show you a little bit. I don't want to show you too much, just a lot of fashion photo, but we just picked a few, yeah, you can see. This is also inspired by Klimt from yeah. like uh, 19, 1910, that period. And what other people probably don't know about you is that you're passionate about Austrian furniture. Yes, of Austrian design, Austrian furniture, Austrian painting. I think at that time, all those Austrian uh, artists inspired by China. By, by Asia, by Japanese wood block uh, pen, painting or Chinese Ming furniture. So that, that's why I like a lot. Yeah. This is a, probably everybody know, Jing Yu Xi, Yu Sai Kang, and she wear a lot of my clothes. Yeah, and that's a fabulous piece. I love that. Now this is, uh, I just I have to you. just add, this is Dinda, I just have to add, sorry, um, that TUC is vice chair of our board at China Institute. So she is very dear to our heart. <laughs> exactly. We yeah. put the first one, you see? <laughs> and uh, this is a Susan Sarandon. She's my fan, friend, you know, and you, you, you can quickly go through it. This, uh, yeah, is uh, Roseanne Cash, you know, Jesse Norman. It, she already passed away. And this is a Huang Yin, Chinese opera singer. She loves my clothes. And uh, this is uh, in the left is Jeanette. Then you see with all the different people, I have a Dana Tan. 
Serena Tan, Michelle Kadar, Donut, New York, France. And Jeanette is here, by the way. I see her in the audience. Hi, Jeanette. <laughs> Jeanette, do you see your sexy back? <laughs> Hi, Jeanette. And this is uh, uh, 1995, uh, my coat, where by Louis Bourgeois was in New York Times. And uh, this is, I'm sure everybody knows, Jackie Chan. I did a movie with him, Karate Kid. So he become a fan. So he only wear our clothes. And then from movies, before you know it, we're, um, you're on the stage with Madam Butterfly. Yeah, so you guys see before it was some scarf. So that's a, some, you know, end up inspired uh, Anthony Miguela. We used it in the butterfly look. Yeah, this is a beginning my first collage to design butterfly. So now you can see the set. This is Yamadori. Yeah, Yamadori is the prince. I still remember Anthony Minghella saw this. He, he saw the prince walk out. He said, oh my God, that's it. This is a prince. <laughs> he loved it, yeah. They, they have so much energy. They're so powerful. Um, you know, it's just, they, they have their own voices just like, just like the opera singers do. Now Han Fang, you jumped into another realm. And I think this is, you know, something so beautiful and generous about you, which is your, your support for contemporary Chinese artists. Um, and do, do you want to tell us a little bit about- Yeah, this is, uh, this is an old house in Shanghai, Amman Resort. And uh, Mr. Ma, Jason Ma, and uh, when he started doing this, so we traveled to South Africa and uh, see all the best resort. So I keep telling him, we need the art. We need the art, art space. So in this old, like a 300 years old houses, the downstairs, the, the um, how you say, the basement he made is a gallery for art. So that's, it's so beautiful. Nancy, maybe you should, uh, another one, you can see the second one already. Yeah, you can see this is, uh, this is uh, my really first show. And with, uh, in the left is uh, English design uh, artist, Jill Button. And the right hand is a Shanghai artist, He Xi. It's so beautiful, it's like a museum. Then this is uh, I giving show, Wu Junyong with his video art and his painting. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Xu Danqing, Chinese uh, contemporary young, very, very young, 26 years old girl and with a uh, uh, sculptor in, in the side. So I think Nancy, you saw this show, right? Mm, I saw the previous one. Yes, I saw this one also. Yeah. Was, yeah, I think Saw this one too is a uh, very very successful this uh, couple show and and how did you find these artists I'm trying. um beginning i was uh, you know most of the artists uh, from the same you know all from my school my 2005 uh, 15 my mom is not well in hangzhou so i have to be in hangzhou so much so I asked the, all the teacher, can you introduce me some uh, young artist or teacher if they're good? So they gave me a whole list. So I go through them. So I found all those great artists. That's fabulous. It's yeah, so this room actually I show people my own collection. It's like a Gu Wen Da and Gen Jian Yi. And then show people my taste. Why I collecting this kind of art? Yeah, this is also in the Zhang uh, Zhang Pei Li. So it's all his work. Is this one his too? Oh or? no, this is not Zhang Pei Li. This one is uh, what's his name? 
suddenly I lost it. <laughs> Shanghai. Shanghai artist. Shanghai artist, yeah. This is uh, uh, Zhang Enli. Now he's a kind of really famous in West. One of the top artists in America and Europe uh, and China, obviously, as well. So then, then I thought I want to make, a, you know, my New York apartment lost a lot of windows. So I renovated, I made it become much my New York art space. But beginning I want to make it is like Shanghai art windows. You know, you, you really can see what's going on about the Shanghai. So from this picture, I, I just to show you a few, you can see is a, have a guenda, uh, uh, also, you can see the carpet I designed it, but the, the furniture is have a Chinese, also have a Austrian. Hey, Wang Dongling's ink painting. Yeah, just a, that's the space in Shanghai, uh, in New York. And actually, that's the space that you're sitting in right now, and that's the oh, space yeah, yeah. sitting in too. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Do you play the piano too? I am learning, learning, <laughs> learning. And this is the beautiful kitchen and dining space. Yes. Yeah, this is uh, why I have a uh, Shao Wen Huan's show. That's the picture of uh, here. And more of your Austrian furniture, right? Yes, yes. Beautiful. Um, so, this is a wonderful opportunity to share with everybody some of the artists that, that you're um advocating. Yeah, this, yeah, this is a Guenda. I had him a long time ago. And uh I collected this when he I think Nancy, before you ask me why I'm doing this, I think at the beginning I want to talk a little bit about it because um I from this school, or a lot of the artists are from the same school. So I left much earlier, 1985, when 1990, a lot of artists come to US. And uh, I think at the beginning, I helped, actually I helped when I found his first apartment. And also I always ask those artists, how I can help you? Do you want me to buy something from you? That time I didn't think about making money, really thinking about how to help this those artists out, you know, from beginning. So because this, actually I've been unbelievable lucky because around me, all those artists have become so successful. So I have a quite nice collection. So after that, and uh, I become a private dealer because a lot of friends like my taste ask me to help them to buy it or take them to shop, shopping, travel to Shanghai, Hangzhou, Beijing to visit artist studio. So then Aman opened up, I got the opportunity. They gave me four space to show Chinese contemporary art. So that's how I really started involved. Even I was doing opera, doing other things, I'm still, you know, I'm still uh, do the opera, doing the art, doing cooking, doing everything together, you know? Yeah, but it's so generous of you to, to share these artists with everybody and to yeah, So I want to tell everybody about this one. This artist from uh, England and uh, Jill, I found her from Instagram. I like so much. I feel her work in, is probably inspired by Asia. Later, she told me, no, not at all. Okay, it doesn't matter, but I like a lot, you know? So I invited her to Shanghai. Then she is my first residency in Amman, living, working there over two months, made a beautiful, beautiful show in, in, uh, in Amman, in Shanghai. That's so then I want to, the next one is, yeah, this is uh, Shao Wenhuan and a great artist from same school. And also he's a professor there. And um, I love his work. This is all the image is not photograph, it's a drawing. 
computer drawing actually from Chen Chen Li Jiang San Tu, you know, from a uh, Tibet uh, forbidden city. They have this long Chinese painting. He took it, repainted, and it become real. So it's not a photograph; it's a painting. It's amazing. And then this is uh, Lois Connor, and she is an uh, American photographer I like so much. So much like uh, have the Chinese intellectual. He, she photographed the Lotus I like so much. So we had a her show too, and in Shanghai and in New York. Beautiful. Now this is a He Xi. Uh, he Xi had a show in Shanghai Gallery, and this monkey right now is in Boston Museum. Yes, um, <laughs> it's an incredible, wonderful donation. Um, it's just we're thrilled to have this in Boston now. Then this one is a Wu Junyong. Wu Junyong is a one of uh, one of the favorites, and he has a great personality, have amazing humor, and also he really mixed Chinese traditional folk art and with uh, Western painting mixed together. So he's the one I invited. First one came to New York, living in my art space for two months did all those paintings. Yeah, and we picked some pictures with tigers because it's the year of the tiger. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> so we have many tigers here. Yeah, and he's just fabulous. He's so full of life and humor and um, the, the traditions just mix in him so naturally and, and just flow out of him. Um, yeah, so the, this is all we so excited. This is a Tiger Club uh, number. Uh, Thai, yeah, Tiger Club. They bought this one in the in US. I have uh, the 21 Club is a Tiger Club. So they own this painting. Very beautiful. So great. So great. So now. But, uh, do you think yeah. we should talk more about this art? A little bit more about them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do we have time to talk about it? Oh, yes, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, because uh, I just uh, very, very excited about uh, Nancy also liked so much about this artist, Wu Junyong. So I, we are, do we should talk about this or you should talk about it? Well, I, I'll just say that, that the museum, that Museum of Fine Arts is just, tickled <laughs> um, that we're going to be able to display some of Wu Zhuyong's art um, this coming fall. And it's going to be the first time his work is in an American museum. And um, it's just so exciting. I think he, he will give people a completely new understanding of, of China, of Chinese art, of Chinese artists. Um, and just open open people's eyes to his world that that he creates that um, comes both out of his background, his father and I think his grandfather also. They were artists in their village. They made sculpture for the temples, and so he grew up surrounded by this really rich. Um, understanding of, of Chinese folklore. And then before he knew it, he was at the same academy that you were at and, and learning about European art and classical European art and American art. And somehow out of that just evolved his, his own really unique style that is just so full of life and love of life and humor. Um, so it's uh, really, really exciting. Um, yeah, so that, that for me, I think uh, so, in, I think the most exciting thing for me is uh, how I can help to bring more contemporary Chinese artists to 
U.S. to have more people to see their work, also have opportunities to show their, like Wu Junyu have a painting, also video art. He's a great uh, performer artist. So I think it's just,、um, you know, I think I really want to grab everybody today, you know, in the audience. Please join me together, help the Boston.、Um, The Fine Art Museum going to have good contemporary Asian artists to have a start, have a you know one after another one have a good show in the future. Do you think so? Yes, and thank you so much, Han Feng, for your support. You know, for your support of the artists and your support of showing the artists.、Um, you're just such a, a incredible bridge and、um, enthusiast and. Yeah, I I'm very happy to be that bridge. I really want that everybody、uh, can be joining us to become the this、uh, bridge all together. So we will we will、uh, find the way contact everybody. If anybody interested, please contact me or with the China Institute. All can be fine. Do you agree? Absolutely yes, and you know the thing about this art is、um, these con- young contemporary artists and older contemporary artists. You know, it's so diverse, it's so rich, and it just shows, you know, the great diversity of China, which I think we really need to learn more about and and and、um, share with the world about how rich、um, China. Chinese culture is, and 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 how unique each little corner is, and and different objects and different works of art will resonate with with different people. But I think Wu Junyong is just, you know, he's so wel welcoming and so human.、Um, so, thank you again. And now we're gonna. Han Feng is going to pull another rabbit out of her hat because <laughs> you know some people say that they reinvent reinvent themselves. Han Feng doesn't reinvent herself; she just keeps on inventing and just keeps on creating. And、um, it's not a reinvention; it's just an invention, and it's a world and exploration. So, so tell us, tell us about this. Well, last year I have、uh, everybody so afraid of the you know COVID, so I have nothing to do, and、um, also、um, Steve,、uh, the, this、uh, M ninety seven Stephen Harris, he keep telling me, you know, you have a good eye, you should use a real camera, not use the iPhone. So I bought a camera and learned how to use it. So I took some still life, and everybody likes so much. So that's a、uh, that's all what happened, you know. Yeah, these these are so exciting. Just, so、uh, yeah, still life is a、uh, I I I didn't thinking so much. It just、uh, really kill my time. Do some photograph. Well, <laughs> all, the, all the friend like a lot. So end up.、Uh, I had a show last year in Boston and、uh, also in Provincetown Schoolhouse, and、uh, Boston's Robert Kine. And now, yeah, so this is all. I love、show. this one. I love this egg in the Chinese rock. It's just yeah.、Uh, so now I'm gonna show in Bay,、uh, in Shanghai and in Taiwan. Then this one going to show in April in. Beginning April in Victoria Monroe Gallery. This is a new, new, new piece. Is this one of the new ones also? Yeah, yeah. This is a new one. Just a really mixed up different pumpkins. You know, it's so full of texture and color and just totally.、Um... So this one I like a lot. This one I went to Honduras last year. So the daytime, I walk around, I cutting branches, I put in my bedroom. When everybody falls asleep, I start photograph. So this is my Honduras photograph. Everybody will see it in April. 
this is a uh, peonies. It's a. Uh, it, it's just a very oh, okay. Let, we not, let's not talk about my photograph too much. <laughs> we, but tell we us about the vases. Oh, the vases is from uh, uh, Maria Riplato. She's original from Colombia, mm -hmm. and she actually is a, was a very famous a photographer for still life for Martha Stewart. Then she's so tired of a photograph, she went to to do a pottery. So I representing, yeah, I representing her. So this is a you you can see the show about the in the Victoria Monroe galleries, yeah. the information, yeah, but I will post also. Great. So that's it, so I'm done. Uh, you're not done yet. <laughs> we're gonna open, um, we're gonna open the floor to questions, but also I just wanna thank you. You were such an inspiration, I think, to, to everybody, just to see how, you know, your career, your life is just, it just flowers and and you know it's everything is so uplifting and and you're just so generous with, with yourself um, and sharing yourself and all your creativity with the world. So so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every, thanks to everybody. I want to thanks to everybody to listen to me <laughs> to tell your story. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. And can you thank tell us about the you painting know. behind you? Oh, that's uh, Francesco Camente. I met him uh, uh, in Shanghai, and I love his work. And uh, so, and uh, he came. I invited him to my home for dinner, and he fell in love with my fatty pork. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he wanted. He said, "Can I invite my wife too? She loves fatty pork too." So we become friends. I go to visit. You know. One day I wear that coat. She, he loved it. He said, "Have fun. Have to paint you. We schedule for next week. I want to paint." So funny. So I, I sit for him for six hours. Then I, he did this portrait. I like very much. And because of that, I invited him a few times for fatty pork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that's so wonderful. Can I jump in now? Um, yeah, yeah. If I may, I mean, it's so fabulous. Thank you both for walking through those, um, you know, incredible images. And I want to propose, make a proposal right now, which is in the fall. Let's do a collaboration somehow, you know, between the Boston, the Museum of Fine Arts. Let's do a program when you've yes. got some um, Wu Jun Yong, Yong uh, the show, you know, happening, let's definitely reconvene and do a program that would be just so wonderful. And then, you know, for New Yorkers and people elsewhere who can't make it to Boston, that's a chance for them to see some of his work. So um, that would be just fabulous. Um, so I'm going to kick it off with a couple of questions, if I may. I see that there's one question um, from the audience. So I urge you all in the audience to, you know, type away, throw it, throw us your questions. But I first, I guess I want to ask you, Han Feng, you know, you've been such a bridge between the United States and China. You literally embody, you know, you're the embodiment of that. That's everything the China Institute is, is sort of, um, you know, committed and devoted to. I'm really curious as to what you think Americans don't understand about China. What do you think, you know, I, firstly, I mean, I'll say one thing, one reaction that I had to looking at, you know, your incredible gallery, for example, at the Amman Resort or whatever. I think that Americans, um, you know, you look at those images and you look at, and there's no question that China is becoming a very modern country, right? Yeah. It's become a very, very modern place. But I'm just really curious as to what you think, you know, what do you, America, wish, can, what do you can, wish Americans can, knew about China? I think the Americans don't really know too much about the China. Yeah. America very focused to New York Times or some news that, you know, and yeah. not really know, only like a you, a few, like an Nancy. We go to China so many times. Yeah. You know what's going yeah. on. I love China. Right. I like so much. I really believe that China is a future, is a taking over. Yeah. And America, I, I think every country have good, bad, and uh, you yeah. can't dig in, you know? So I, that's how I see it. We need to be positive, 
to look at the sunny side of everywhere. That's how I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, and what do Chinese people think about you and your designs? I mean, I was so curious looking at those wonderful photographs of, you know, just people on the street and you ask them to wear your scarf and you photograph them. They look so beautiful. They look so great. But do they think, man, this is crazy stuff. What do they think about you and your work? Now they think, uh, even I'm in China that time, 1984, 85, and, and when I live in China, because of my personality, so open, I chat, yeah. talking to, nobody thinking I'm from China. <laughs> Everybody, are you from Hong Kong? No, from here. <laughs> so funny, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but I always smile. Mm -hmm. Why smile? I open the door, everything's yeah. good. Yeah. Even even here, when I yeah. walk around, I saw some homeless people. First thing I do, smile, say mm -hmm. hello. They just want to make sure don't touch me, you know, <laughs> or something, you know. Right. When you feel danger, you yeah. want, you know, help a little bit with the positive energy, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I also want to note that we've got a number of people who are very serious art, you know, Chinese art people in the audience. We're so delighted. Hi, Frida Merck. I see you here. Uh, Jan Stewart, I see you here. So delighted that you're here with us tonight. Um, Misin Long, so thrilled that you're with us too. And uh, Jeanette, of course, Jeanette Chang, so happy you're here too. So many, you have a lot of fans, Han Fung, a lot of fans. Um, my old friend, Lisa Xia, I'm so happy you're here too. David Leung has dialed in from Shanghai. Um, he's a big fan of yours, Han Fong, and uh, you know, an ac active um, member of the fashion community. So we're just delighted to have all these people with us. Um, my you know, second question, and then I wanna to turn to questions from the audience is, um, I wonder if your, if your audience has changed. In other words, when you first started, probably, most of your, um, you know, collectors and people who bought your work were probably foreigners because it was not very familiar in China, right? But yes. now, is it, yes. it is more Chinese? Can I tell you something unbelievable is, I think the, I don't have a Chinese audience. When 2005, when I go back to China, I don't have at all. Right. Now, for example, I look at the art, People buy my art. Everybody is a Chinese. Right, right. It. You know, changing, you know, and the fashion, right. people still order clothes from me. Yeah. I have to say is uh, mixed, you yeah. know, half a half. Mm -hmm. Half mm -hmm. Chinese, half uh, American or right. European, you know, yes. changing. Before, only American, you know. Right, right. So fascinating, really. Yeah. Really and that reflects a major change in China writ large. Um, okay, so a question from Marilyn Gleistein. Gleistein, your photos show the influence of artists like Zu Okay, forgive me. Artists like Zuburan and other still life still life painters with strong lighting and loving respect for the objects. Is that right? And it's like another cross-cultural connection. This yeah, person. yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, like a lot of people look at my photograph thinking about the Dutch painting or Spanish uh, painter in the uh, uh, 17th, uh, uh, 16th century or something. They tell me about it. I don't know too well, but I'm sure I look at the painting in the yes. museum inspired yeah. me, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I've got a question from a wonderful young artist, by the way, a great friend named Cassia Karas, who is asking, what advice would you give to Chinese American artists who are just starting out? I think uh, forget about the American Chinese, the world is international. Right. I think for anybody, just a fairness, just go ahead, do it. Do it is the most important thing, do it. Because a lot of people say, never do it. If you do it, you believe it, you always make it. So I still, and today I have a customer came over to see me and then she still remember, she met me like early 90. We met somebody tell me, Han Fun, you coming too late. If 10 years ago you came to New York, you'll be so famous. <laughs> she said, look, <laughs> this guy's wrong. You made it yourself. I said, you know, in, 
success depends, you know, how you measure. I feel I'm happy. That's my measurement. If I'm happy, I'm doing well, that's it, I'm success. So for young artists, I always believe, try everything, do it. That's it, mm -hmm. love it, do it. Here's a follow on question to that one, which is um, as you visit new places and you travel to new places, how do you broaden your connection with the art society in those places? How do you get I, 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 I don't think so. I only look at the, um, how you say, I only go to museum, take a look. I, if I know one artist, I meet one artist. If I, I, I don't really try that hard. I probably try hard to see which gallery, which museum I want to see it if I travel new places. But otherwise, I, for me right now, last year I traveled to Mexico, Honduras. This year I'm going, I'm going soon to Uruguay, to Mexico again. I want to see what the local food different than what I see. I want to find this, our branches. I'm going to cut a piece, bring home to photograph them. Want to see what's a different culture, you know? How did you, because I'm so fascinated that you went to art school really to study art, right? You were studying painting, is that right? Actually, that is a good question. In China, I got into this famous school, yeah. 81 is a, yeah. called, a, it's a graphic design really. Okay. But okay. they don't have a graphic department. So yeah. they teach you everything. They teach you oil, they teach you water painting, they teach you calligraphy, they teach you taking photo, they teach you everything. Hmm. But they don't, or hand write, um, like a, look like a machine printed. Mm -hmm. That's it. So they don't really, but I think even better, they don't tell you how to do it. They tell you just open mind to do whatever it is. So, wow. make, so that's why I think I never learned fashion. I don't know how to cut, how to sew. I don't know how to do pattern. So I just, I have the eye. Mm -hmm. I think of the training for the eye, that's all. Right, that's what's so interesting. That's what to me distinguishes you, you know, because you are, and what makes you such a kind of force of nature because your interest is an intellectual interest in the art. And then from that, you went into fashion and design and stuff, but it's yeah. through a very artistic. Yeah, and also I want to tell everybody why I like a cooking, why I like a photography. Because uh, doing a foot, a pen, uh, clothes take too much time. I have to paint, I have to find somebody to make a pattern, have to cut, have to sew <laughs> uh, two weeks. They make something. I'm exhausted already. The cooking, two hours. Do you like my food or not? Everything fast. <laughs> Photograph fast, you know? So I see immediately. That's why. So what do you so what do you prefer to cook? You, I, I understand you make fatty pork. What is that? Home sorrow, right? Home <laughs> <Hong Saro. laughs> Okay. So you make fatty pork. What else do you like to cook? And here's Hoko hot pot. Okay, a hot pot behind Nancy there. Yeah, I make my own sauce, but also I like a mixed. I, I don't have an agenda. Like a I, I think if you look at my food in the press before 1995, 96, I did that with Martha Stewart about mm -hmm. the the traditional cooking. 2000, I did a television show with her, already modern cooking, how to do modern Chinese New Year. And uh, so already slowly changing. I mix Italian, you know, American, everything. Most important thing, how found the fresh ingredient, how to do it. That's why, honestly, I love California food. Fresh, tasty, great, mm. you know. Mm. Wonderful. So I've got a question here from Ali Mazara, who says, Hi, Han Fang. I first met you when I met you in the early 2000s. After we met, you were so kind to meet with a dear friend of mine, a Vietnamese American artist. I've been a fan of yours ever since. So again, that shows your generosity towards artists. Today's <laughs> program has shown me you're a true Renaissance woman. I thank you for all you're doing, helping artists, creating and sharing beauty, etc. I direct a program to support young women to become global leaders in all fields, the arts, science, education, and business. And so she's asking, Ali wants to ask you, what advice would you give to young women who want to be leaders globally? 
I think very important is the confidence. That's the most important thing for me to be leadership. You have to have a confidence. You have to know what you believe, you trust yourself. And then second, I think you have to have a kind heart. The heart have to be kind, have to be open. How big a heart you are, how big thing you do. So I think that two things are very, very important, you know. That's beautiful. Uh, okay, here's another question for you. What do you think of the new wave of young Chinese fashion designers? Do they represent the new identity of Chinese fashion and put China on the fashion map? Yes, I'm so proud of a Chinese designer. And uh, I really think beginning, everybody always say, um, uh, oh, Chinese copy everything, you know, and then now I really believe China Chinese designer have their own voice, have, I'm so proud, you know, like an artist too, you know, and the same, they have their own voice, they have a deep roots, you know, why, that's why I'm crazy about them. So, so that's why I uh, become this big bridge. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wonderful. So there, I don't see any more questions from the audience right now, although we do have a few more minutes. So if you want to ask any more questions, please type them in. Um, Nancy, did you, did you have anything else you wanted to talk to, talk about in terms of the art that you're working on with Han Feng? Well, one thing I wanted, I, I thought maybe Han Feng could stand up and, and show us what she's wearing because it's so beautiful. Oh, no, no, yes. no. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, please, please. No, you've got to. That jacket is so beautiful. Please show no, I, us. I, I, I wear the tights and the bottom is not right. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're wearing tights. <laughs> I thought I thought that you guys only have. No, the top is so, that is so beautiful, that jacket. It's just- Well, that. anybody want to come to visit my studio, please coming, uh, uh, coming back traveling after mid March, I would love to invite you guys over or in any audience want to visit, please uh, make appointment. I will be happy to show uh, design and the art. And then you too. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. It's so great. So Han Feng, I'm still curious. Was there anybody in your childhood who made things? You know, I know for me, my father was made everything, you know, whether it was our stuffed animals or furniture or every anything, and that that kind of gave me the desire to create. Was there there anybody in your childhood who was around you making things besides cooking? Well, I think uh, two people. One is my childhood. Um, I might have a neighbor, and that is a very very old man. He often he 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 make a uh, lian huang hua how you say ah, the, uh cartoons yeah cartoons so i love watching him he's very old of a beard mm -hmm. like a uh, all old style so mm -hmm. i go to his uh, room look how he make a pencil first then use the ink how to do it that's number one two mm -hmm. is my childhood like uh, maybe eight, nine years old. I have an, also another neighbor is a girl. Also love to tell story, same time draw cartoon. Hmm. I just uh, loved it. So I was watching them. That's wonderful. So, yeah, I don't know why. I think my mother is very important to me and she keep telling me I'm very creative, very creative. So I made the decision I'm gonna learn painting hmm. and uh, I, I, you know, young time, I was young, my mother asked a painter, do you think my daughter should learn music first or painting first? And then he said that uh, music first. So I learned 11 years violin. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. So then, because he said that when she order painting, she can learn anytime. So that's why. I learned music and uh, she, I don't like so much at all, but I appreciate my mother uh, giving me opportunity make, uh, when I learn the music, I understand the music so much more. Mm. Regular mm -hmm. people, right? Then I learned painting. I was so fast 
like eight months, like everybody couldn't believe it, how much I learned. So that's why I got in this best school. I thought I was just testing the water. I never can get in, you know, but in the end I got in. So I was very, very lucky. Yeah. What was your, what was your mother and stepfather's background? What kind of work did they do professionally? My, my mother is, uh, how you say, chemist. Mm-hmm. She in medicine for women and uh, man birth control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then my, uh, my stepfather is a teacher, English teacher in the, in the high school. Okay, in Hangzhou or in outside Hang- of the city? Hangzhou. In Hangzhou. Hangzhou. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so you are such a glow. I mean, I'm, I'm always interested because China has changed so fast in one generation. It's like two different countries, right? I mean, it's just right. incredible. The experience your parents had growing up is so oh, different from the experience oh, you had. So different. Yeah. So you're such a global citizen now. What do they think about you? And are they equally kind of global citizens, or what's you know what's their? They, my, my parents, my parents all passed away. You know, 2016. Yeah. Okay. But I have to say, I never tell my mother what I did. So. But uh, my mother friend would say, oh my God, your daughter is in the magazine. Or <laughs> she was so proud, of, you know, wow. So I said, you know who I am. You don't need to know more than that. You know? Right. Oh. So that's why I keep telling her. But uh, she is uh, so proud of me. And uh, I'm only child. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, she you know what- me yeah. for confidence. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, we're just about at time now. And so I just want to thank both of you so much. I mean, Han Fong, you are your generosity just and same with you, Nancy, but you're both such generous people. And, um, you know, we can I think everyone in the audience can feel your generosity and your warmth. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for sharing. You know, you're helping to tell the story of China. You know, your story is the story of China. Everybody has their own story of China. And we're so happy to have the, you know, the opportunity to hear your story and, and share your vision. Um, and Nancy, so excited about the work that you're doing at the museum. Can't wait for that show in the fall with, um, with Wu Junyong. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll come back to you about that. For yes. everyone in the audience, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in and encourage you to tune in to a few wonderful upcoming programs. Um, on Tuesday, just so you know, we've got a series of Chinese New Year programming. Um, so happy to kick off the Year of the Tiger this evening. And on Tuesday, we're producing a super fun Chinese New Year variety show with fabulous music, uh, dance, and drums from China, all very modern in some sort of traditional, but in, presented in a very modern way. And we're also gonna have a little bit of storytelling around the meaning of the Year of the Tiger. So um, that's gonna be a very fun program. So please tune in. Wednesday next week, we have Liz Economy, who's a wonderful China scholar um, and Min Xin Pei, another wonderful political scientist. Um, they're going to, you know, in the midst of the Winter Olympics, Olympics they're gonna be talking about the world according to China, which is the title of Liz's new book. So that's going to be a really wonderful, fascinating program. And then on Wednesday, February 16th, we're co-presenting with Asia Art Archives, A Night at the Museum, which is going to be a walkthrough of the new M Plus Museum in Hong Kong with its top curators. Um, so that's, we're very, very excited about those programs. Hope you'll tune in. And um, again, Han Fong and Nancy, you are just incredible. Thank you so much for sharing um, your wisdom, your vision. And uh, it's been a really fun evening for all of us. We hope to get you back soon. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Dina. Thank you so Thank much. You, Nancy. <laughs> Wonderful. See you again. <laughs>